Hi, welcome back to Cooking with Grandpa. This is Joe. Today we're gonna make something special. It's gonna be for my uh, birthday coming up. It's called a blackout cake. Years ago, when I was young, there was a lady who lived upstairs in our apartment and TVs were scarce, so we finally got a TV and we used to invite her down to, to uh, come down and watch TV. And she worked in, in Manhattan and she used to stop by this bakery, I think it was called Evinger's. And they used to make this here. She, she knew I loved chocolate layer cake. That's my favorite cake. She used to bring this cake home. And now I realize it's called a blackout cake. And it was made with a pudding filling. And you know what I feel about puddings. Just take a look at our homemade pudding that we made, chocolate pudding. I love pudding. And this icing is made with a pudding type icing. So we're gonna get started now, but there's a couple of things you gotta prep before we make this sponge cake. We gotta get, we have to get our flour and we have to get our chocolate mixture all uh, mixed up. So I'm gonna take this here milk, I heated it up a little. All the ingredients that we're gonna have in this here are gonna be listed at the bottom. I suggest you always get a scale when you're baking, but if you don't, I'm gonna list it in volume two. So we're gonna mix this all to get, to get this started. We have this, and we have to mix a little sugar into this. Into this mixture. Okay, now we're gonna leave this go until it melts up. We want it to get to about, you know, melting. And then we're gonna get, well, before we put it in our mixture, we're gonna have to heat it up to about 160 degrees. We'll leave this go now. The other part of preparation that I'm doing here is over here. We have our flour, which also I weighed, and our baking powder. And I've uh, already dusted and greased this pan. And I'm gonna put a, a, a lining in, a parchment paper. We have to get that ready. Now I got my cake flour and my baking powder weighed out in here. And I'm gonna sift this about four times. And we'll get back to you when that's all done. You want this mixed up pretty good. Okay, so this is the first time. I just went through once, put it back in. And do it again. And then we'll get back to you when it's over. And I've done it about four times. Okay, I just sifted all my flour and baking powder. And I'm using this pan because I want to try and make a nice layer that I can cut into three separate layers. So I'm gonna cook it all in one time. And uh, the next part of this procedure, this is called the hot sponge method. I'm gonna use, I have all our eggs and everything. You'll, all the ingredients will be in the description below. We wanna try to get this, and I got my sugar here, and my vanilla. And we're going to try to get this up to about 100 degrees before we start mixing it. It makes it a little easier to mix. It melts the sugar. And we'll see how it works out. I, I got it in kind of like a double boiler here. You don't want to cook the eggs, so just be careful that you don't go too far apart with this. So my water is uh, it's about 93, that's good. We're going to get that up to about 100 degrees and I'll get back to you with that. And I'll show you how that looks. Okay, 
get close to where we want. We want this about 100 degrees. This makes it a lot easier for mixing. It doesn't take as long and it melts that sugar in. Okay, that's about, about where we want to bake. You gotta keep stirring so you don't want to cook the eggs. I'm gonna shut this off. And you know, it, this is a sponge, hot sponge method. Not too many people like to make a sponge cake from scratch. Because there's a couple of things you gotta pay attention to. But if you pay attention to the details, it's no big deal. So you put this on your mixer. Put your whip in. And I'm gonna time this to show you how long it takes for this to get up to a nice yellow uh, kind of firm, close to firm. Don't do it too fast because you don't want big air bubbles, you want small air bubbles. And I'll start this time with it. Okay, I'll get back to you in a little while with this, see how long it takes. Okay, and as this is whipping up, I boiled about two ounces of water. I wanted it boiling. And this is what they call a hot sponge. You add this as it's mixing, it's a little at a time. So we've gone about three minutes, and I'm gonna start adding this a little at a time. Don't add it all in one time. Just get it in there a little at a time. We gotta get this to yellow foam. Okay, we've done this about 14 minutes. It took to get it to this point. I want to show you where it is. It's about nice and light. And I usually test it like this. I put this in here and see if it holds the crease. It holds the crease a few seconds. That's good. See, it's kind of good enough. Now what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to change this. paddle right. now you can mix this in by hand if you want but I'm going to use the paddle and I'm going to try and mix it in slowly the flour Way to foam now. So I'm going to put it into the paddle and I'm going to put it on stir speed. Nice and easy. A little at a time to get this in there. You don't have to mix this in too much because the next procedure we're going to be putting the chocolate in this. I'm not going to mix it up a little more too. to about 160 degrees and we're going to slowly add this in here crazy with this.
situation in our pen. Okay, we're gonna got it in our pan. We're gonna put it in our oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. We'll check it in about 20 minutes, see how it looks. Okay, pretty sure it was kind of done. It's very hard to give time for these things. You're gonna have to play it by ear. Let me take it out, check it with your toothpick or whatever. Comes out clean. You see, it's coming out clean. Now this took. This is a big. Now what I made here, the quantity I'm giving you in the description, is enough to make a nice two-inch layer, or a sheet pan like this, two quarters thick. If you put it in a sheet pan, and then you can make a, a log cake out of it. We're gonna let this rest for another 10, 10 minutes now, and then we're gonna dump it out of the, uh, out of the, uh, what do you call it, pan. Okay, we got our cake resting for about 10 minutes. We're gonna go in and we're gonna dump it out of here. They don't wanna leave it in too long because it keeps cooking. Just make sure she's free. I want it to cool down, but I want to keep the moisture in the cake. Oh, Jesus. Missed my wood. That's hot. There you go. Keep the moisture in, and we'll let that rest, and we'll be done with that. Okay, we're kind of done. And as you, as you can see, we got a nice layer cake here, sponge layer, and I'm going to cut this into three different layers. I'm going to freeze it first and let it age a little because they taste better when they age. And uh, then I'm going to cut this into three layers and then we're going to make our icing. Okay, now we're ready to layer our blackout cake. I had it frozen for a couple of days. It's defrosted now a little bit. I still got it real cold because when you cut it, it's easier to cut it while it's cold. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make uh, we're gonna make our uh, we're gonna coat it with our icing. This is a chocolate pudding icing, and I and I don't want to make the, the whole show you the whole procedure another video, but it's the same type of chocolate pudding icing that we have in our chocolate pudding video. So the procedure is the same. The only thing is you're not using milk and, you, and it's a water base. Of course, this is an icing and it's a little more sweeter, but the procedure is the same. The procedure will be in the description and also all the ingredients for the icing. So we'll get to that later. Okay, this is the hard part right now. I'm not the greatest at decorating, but they tell you to put a notch in the cake over here so you can put all your layers back together. 
I already marked this off for three, three half inch layers and I have this layer on top that I'm going to clear off. We're going to crumble that up and use that for, for, uh, for uh, dusting the uh, cake. Now you start off like this with a nice long blade and just keep circling that thing around. And don't, don't move the blade up or down. Keep it kind of straight. And keep going back and forth until you get through the cake. Keep turning the turntable. Okay, we're through with one. We'll put that over here now. That's gonna be our spare piece. Now we're gonna go down to our next one and find it here. And you do the same thing. Back and forth, turn a little, back and forth. There's another layer. Now we're gonna get this one in there. second layer. Try to keep them in water and this is our bottom layer. Okay, I'm going to clean up a little and we'll get back to you. Okay, the next move we have to make is we have our bottom layer here. I made a simple syrup and I put some vanilla into it and I'm making a simple syrup that I'm going to coat. I warmed it up a little so it spreads a little easier. But you coat the uh, sponges pretty good. Don't soak them crazy, but get them soaked. Okay, how I get my layers kind of even, I made a half inch cake layer and I'm gonna make 3 8 tube on this here and I'm gonna start laying it in while I'm turning this. To get kind of an even layer, 3 8 of an inch thick. You can put it on with a spatula if you like. But Try to get it more precise with this. Keep turning the table, not don't use your arm like I'm doing right now. Like I said, I wish my granddaughter was here to help me with this. She's much better than me. But I'll have to survive it. Okay, so we got it kind of even. I'm just going to kind of get it out there. Smooth it off a little. And it's a little bit like trying to get a good layer there. Now we're going to take our second layer. This one I cut a little too thick. But I'm going to soak this one on both sides. Okay, I lined my notches up. I soaked that one side. Now I'm soaking this side of it.
okay, we got the top done. Most done, we'll finish that off in a little while. But some of the sides here. Hope we have enough icing. Okay, we're all done. Here's my cake for my birthday. Like I told you at the beginning of the video, my favorite cake from my neighbor upstairs. A blackout cake, an Evidges blackout cake. I don't know if it's the way they made it, but we tried our best. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you soon. I'm gonna eat this with my grandchildren for my birthday.